Lane just says to Tortuga. It's an LSD or landing ship got the assault ship light is the way out here today. That was the uh, USS Oak Hill. An assault ship was on the land of Marines and equipment from Muscle Beach. And as assault ships have interior wheel and exit full of the water, then they drop a gate and the ship's turn floating in and out landing craft and armor craft. The aft deck would accommodate a variety of attack and transport helicopters. She's 609 foot long, 84 foot across the beam, a crew of around, around 340, accommodating up to 400. Ready to go, huh? Past the Tortuga is Pier 3 coming into the end. Pier 3 is often referred to as the submarine pier. In Norfolk, Virginia, we have only fast attack submarines on board here. The Navy's larger subs are very ballistic missiles are stationed in the south of the state of Kings Bay, Georgia. Things have not changed since yesterday. We're going to see five submarines appear three to the right, and all five of these subs will be identical. We'll see three subs on the side here. Submarines, by the way, are painted totally black in color. Some of them have an orange and blue container going around each three of the submarines. So again, the three subs on the side of here. There's two on the opposite side of here, three. Some at the opposite end of the pier at the end. And also another one all the way in shore on the left side of the pier, but all the way in shore on the right. All three subs again are new submarines. They're Virginia class attack subs. The US Defiance to be added to the US fleet. Considered a super high speed and super quiet drive. They're 377 foot long. 33 foot across the beam. Each submarine here carries a crew right around 126. They're all powered by one atomic reactor. The core and the reactor plants will power them for 15 to 20 years between the fuel and equivalent to a distance of over a million miles of steam line. They have a speed on the surface of 20 knots, dive 30 knots plus. Top speeds classified information that you didn't know. Knots equal to about one and one eighth of a mile an hour. Now the primary mission of the sub, like these five to our right, would be to engage and to destroy the enemy submarine. The versatile of that. All five of these subs carry aboard the long range land attack missile called Tomahawk and allow them to strike land based targets hundreds of miles away. They can engage either an enemy surface ship or submarine utilizing the world's most advanced torpedo. It's called a Mark 48. The Mark 48 is considered a heavyweight wire guided torpedo. It has an effective range of 23 miles and so can travel at speeds of over 70 miles an hour. The ability to deliver to its target, whether an enemy surface ship or submarine, the high explosive red. Uh, about 650 pounds of light explosives. So, again, these are attack subs, primary function engagements for the enemy submarine. Standard patrol time for the attack subs run around 45 days. Some of that or all of that is under the water without a good service. We're going to find three more ages equipped ships in the next pier. Look at all the ships. It's going to be Pier 4. The easiest way for you to identify so an ages equipped ship is 7. Look at the upper structure of that ship. You locate one of those eight sided or octagon shaped plates, it's by one right arsenic indication. It's an ages equipped ship. The side of the pier closest Which to one? us at the end of the pier is hole 79. Right that is That's the USS Boston. Right? Austin. She's uh, an Harley Burr class, got a missile destroyer behind oh, the Boston. Oh, because Austin. it's under, it's under it's the ocean. Number 60. The USS Norman, the entire yeah, Ticonderoga, or ages class guided missile. Six of the 27 ships in this class are named for famous families. So we'll ship a plus on the pier. Absolutely sure, but uh, I think you guys can see the one of her name on the start of the ship. She's a plus on another five go cruiser. And these are above uh, the classes of ships we're seeing today. Today, equipment we just assist. Let's focus for a moment on number 79. The Oscar Austin is a weapon on that ship. Yeah, but it's Structure ship of the number four structure. We'll see a row of windows. The location of the bridge above the house on the Oscar Austin. Once you locate those windows, look below those windows on the platform of the four structures. That's what it looks like an elongated line gray cylinder with them. Now, actually, it's at the top of the gray tour. Extending from the side of the gray tour, there's a cluster of six barrels, black in color. Located at the located the weapon. It's called Vulcan Phalanx. That is a ship's last line of defense against a low flying sea sky missile, or maybe an aircraft. That is the ship's initial defense. It's in essence, it's a radar controlled Gatling gun. But that weapon's radar locks on a target that the theoretical weight of fire is 4,500 rounds a minute, weighs to roughly 75 rounds per second. The effective range is three miles wow. within a mile and a half. Vulcan Phalanx is rated at nearly 100% oh accurate. The weapon using a 20 millimeter ammunition projectiles constructed to touch the carbide, so this is its armor piercing capability. On the surface and batch, we'll see the base they carry that closely weapon called Vulcan Phalanx. Flag will see the display on the bow where our ships is our Navy's Union Jack, it's 50 stars on the AMU field. It's a commissioning pin, and many of these are all commissioned U.S. warships.
Commodore 8 is equipped ships on the next pier. Coming up on our right on this side of the next pier was hull number 87, USS Mason. Another Marley Burke class guided missile story. Again, the uh, Marley Burke's a little smaller size than the Tyco Cruise. It's right behind number 87. It's a Tyco Cruise, number 38, the USS Philippine Sea. Another ship on the left side of the pier, number 64, the USS Gettysburg. Did you say USS Philippine Sea? Power plants on the cruises as well as on the destroyers like the three on our right are powered. The ships are powered by four generally electric LN2500 gas turbine engines. The gas turbines on these ships are the same engines used in the military C5 transport of the DC-10 commercial airline fleet as are the marine version. Four turbines on these ships combined will generate 100,000 champ horsepower, making these all 39 plus standard ships. Let's look on this next pier to the right. We can find four more, or actually three more of the agents of ships at the end of the pier. Plus, this two is from the Harley Burke, number 94, the USS Pitsa. It's getting faster. Behind this is number 61, the Monterey. I think we, I thought we saw the Monterey early today, but that's a Monterey here on the 61. And on the left side of the pier, from the Monterey, there's another Harley Burke. That one probably is the USS Pitsa. Things you notice about the early Burks are supercharged to build the trolley and angles and sloping surfaces. There are a couple of reasons for this. The early Burks are the first class of surface warship built in the United States Navy since the Second World War. They've been built in Charlie and steel. Those surface ships in the base or hulls are built of steel, but their superstructures are built of aluminum. The early Burks are all steel built warships, meaning their superstructures are very heavy. The side of the structures in the inward of the ship center of gravity, you can use the Signal strikes a surface in that type. Signals deflected off at an angle rather than directly back to its center. From the distance, these ships do not light up. But it's be as big a torque on the way in ours as it all has all flat up as far as surfaces. Two ships on the next pier, closest to us, the big ship with the two bright orange color light boats is a Kaiser Oiler. That's the U.S. Senator Joshua Humphreys. And she's just like the Kanawa. We saw the fuel depot a little while ago. And directly ahead of the Joshua Humphreys, another Harley Burke class got a missile destroyer. That one is named the Texas USS Truxton, one of the newer ships in the class. By the way, the Harley Burke's and newer ships like the Truxton, for example, run the U.S. taxpayer nearly $2 billion per ship. Even the earlier ships of this class built back in the early 90s were being turned out at the cost of about a billion apiece. Very expensive, high tech the U.S. warships. Another Harley broke on the left side of the pier, all the way in short of the right, in short of the other one, the one out of the damage machines. We have behind there are over 70 Harley Brooks in the fleet today, and more than out of construction. There's at least a yards in the United States to build the Harley Brooks. The ships are either built in Eagle Shipyard down in Pasquale of Mississippi, the other are built in the Harley Brooks, will be a bad five iron works of a bad one. This pier ahead of us, where the warehouse is located, is Pier 8. To as the supply of your base. And let's look above and on either side of your eight, you'll see a ship coming into view above the warehouse. It has two tall and unusual looking superstructures. The ship is named the USS Mason Verde. She is the of the USS San Antonio and also the USS New York. We saw in the very beginning of the tour. It's the newest uh, type of the salt ship that's used in the tour today. It's called LPDs, a landing platform docks. We mentioned earlier we'll tell you a lot more about those unusual superstructures in this class of ship. Those are called the advanced and closed mass systems. First class of ship the Navy's built to incorporate this type of mass system in the ship's actual construction. A couple of principles involved in the design. One is to protect the weather, a lot of the ship's sensor and gathering equipment, radar systems, communication systems, and other systems used for gathering information. One of the equipment is protecting the weather, it doesn't have to be serviced or replaced nearly as often. The second feature in the design is stealthy technology, that is the angle and sloping surfaces, as well as the upper part of the ship. It's laying inward on that ship, so uh, on the radar, she's not the light up present because we get target on the radar, she's because all flatness or square surfaces. The ship coming into view on the other side of the U.S. Mesa Verde is number five. Her name is USS Baton. It's an LHD landing helicopter dock ship. We saw one of those earlier in the tour today uh, at the, up at the uh, local shipyard. And that ship was number one, the USS Wasp. The Navy had built eight of this class. Unfortunately, eight of the last class built was named the Bonham Richard caught fire about this time last year. She was in the shipyard out on the west coast. 
here before I broke out on the interior uh, deck on that ship, well deck, and uh, the fire burned for days. The damage is beyond repair. Uh, basically, we had into that uh, class now only seven.